Yo, I want to do a big shout out, man, to Crypto Roots. He definitely helped me out on the crypto. Um, he's a great mentor. I appreciate him, man. Check him out. Peace. Aloha, YouTube. This is your boy, Crypto Roots, and I'm back at it again with Mo Crypto Game. And first of all, if you want to learn more about cryptocurrency, blockchain technology, decentralized finance, hit me up for the Crypto Roots mentorship. And if you're working with bigger money, like 10K+, plus, Hit me up for the Crypto Roots Platinum Mentorship, all right? There's no reason you should be working anymore with that kind of money, all right? You should be learning how to jump in this DeFi game, learning how to yield farm, and uh, develop different strategies. If you don't got your bread up like that just yet, hit me up. We're going to start working on different strategies and uh, start getting the state of mind of what it really takes to come up in this crypto game, all right? If you need a decentralized website, I got you. If you need the Ethereum domain for your wallet, I got you. All right. Uh, email crypto roots at ProtonMail. All right. Today we're doing a deep dive. We're doing a deep dive. We're going. We're going deeper than the usual videos. All right. Now there's this new. I'm gonna drop. Look. Uh, look for the link. I'm gonna drop it for Ampleforth. If you don't know anything about Ampleforth, you have to know about Ampleforth before we get into this video. So check the link uh, at the top. And I'll, I'll, I'll post that there, all right? Watch that video before you get into this video. This video has to do with the mad scientist, with the, just a, a genius software engineer. We don't know if it's a person or a group of people. We have no idea. It goes by the name of Bill Drummond. And this dude is just, this dude, just, I'm just saying dude. It could be a group of people, but we don't know, right? So the, this person is just playing with the world right now. Playing with the world, this person understands economics, this under person understands psychology, this person understands software engineering, cryptocurrency, smart contracts. This group or this, this person is able to play around with some of the most advanced technologies uh, and create these financial social experiments. Yeah, like on some real shit. Like this person has the ability to really, this person or group of people has the ability to really like take over the world. Like, I know it sounds crazy, but like when you have that much talent, you know, and you, you sit back on the sidelines and you're like, you know what, let me have fun with this. Let me create some new concepts that we actually have never seen before. We don't know the results. Um, it's economics, it's finance. It's supposed to design and make you money, but obviously you can lose money. And it's based on tokenomics, game theory, market mechanisms, like how do we create these new currencies that just defy, like are, that are, we've never seen before. And so Ampleforth is the precursor to all this, all right? The rebase and how that works and the expansion and contraction. So a lot of that is based off the uh, template of Ampleforth, all right? So Bill Drummond, Experiment. Bill Drummond is a pseudo name for a developer or a group of developers with the goal of returning cryptocurrency back to its cypherpunk roots. Bitcoin was started as a means of tearing down an unfair and segregated financial system where the already rich and powerful rule and exert power. More and more, we see the financial system tightening up its grip on regulations and restrictions guide as, guised as safety policies. With more bar barriers to entry, less people have an opportunity to compete and end up having to work for those in power rather than themselves. This stifles innovation, competitiveness, and risk centralization of money and politics, which lead to corporate fascism. All right? So these, these guys are already with, with the shits. Cryptocurrency has the potential to become a liberating force in society, or yet another way for the rich and powerful to exploit the average citizen. Just like the tech magnets of today, cryptocurrency magnates <laughs> will rise and become corrupt. It is our responsibility to fight against this urge and support the projects that hold the truest intent to the cause, not the coin. All right, so I'm already with this dude, this dude, a group of people, and they use, uh, I think that's Princess Diana as, as the uh, avatar, right? So this person is on some Satoshi shit, like, or group of people. And they are really like on the cypherpunk, uh, crypto punk, like fuck the government type shit. Like, I, and I'm down with that. Like, that's what this thing was all about. And if you've been in the crypto game, you see that uh, it's becoming more centralized and bank and all these cryptocurrencies that aren't cryptocurrencies. 
and we're getting it's we're we're going we're being is we're going we're not getting freer with this cryptocurrency. It's so I like people who are willing to just say, you know what, we're gonna change this game, the, and we're gonna make it the way it's supposed to be, and yeah, we're gonna see what happens. So it's an experiment. It's an experiment. All right. So ample for all right. This is the anti ample X amp. And at the top it says, Ample Forth tries to replicate fiat. We want to destroy it. All right, what does that mean? All right, so here's their manifesto. Rather than attempting to recreate traditional finance structures on the blockchain, we should be developing structures that serve as the antithesis. Otherwise, the same problems inherent to the modern financial system will only be replicated once again. All right, so they're already seeing, seeing what's going on here. We are seeing this happen in the crypto space already. Projects are no longer deemed interesting without the backing of their top tier VCs. Speculators cl clamor at news of big banking institutions and governments allowing their technology to operate within their system. Is there, is there more, no more dignity, dignity in the crypto movement? On some real shit. We get excited when banks and governments and regulations start adapting crypto. But that's not what it's about. That's not what it's about. We're relying too much on them to try to... Uh, pump our bags and this is anti them. This is anti them. So I, I like that. I really appreciate that uh, that and respect that. Anti Ample is an ERC20 token on the Ethereum blockchain. Unlike a regular ERC20 token, Anti Ample has a constantly reducing supply. All right. Holders of the Anti Ample own a portion of the total supply of the token rather than an amount of Anti Ample themselves. When the value of one Anti Ample token decreases, the supply is decreased. Uh, by at at least one percent. This causes each ample anti ample to be worth more. So they decrease the supply, which is supposed to actually increase the value. Okay. While ample forth issues more tokens based on supply and demand, we constantly destroy it. They constantly burn the supply. Cryptocurrency was born on the concept of deflationary assets. Anti ample takes this concept to the extreme. How will the free market behave? How will traders react to a constantly reducing supply? Who knows? What are the limits of our current concept of what a financial system is? We don't have an answer, but if this intrigues you, you might want to join us and find out. All right, so this is an experiment. It's a financial social experiment. And I'm, I'm, I'm really digging that. I'm really digging that. And I feel like this is how you take this technology and cryptocurrency to the next level is, is, is you, you try new things, you break outside the box. All right, certain synthetic commodities, namely the Ampleforth protocol, have introduced a revolutionary new way to dynamically adapt market cap in accordance with the current price of the asset. While the initial goal of Ampleforth was purely to decouple itself from Bitcoin's dominance, the protocol has intentionally introduced the exciting possibility of an entire new asset class which projects such as anti-ample have demonstrated independently of the ample fourth protocol, all right? So it's a new asset class, this, um, they call it EFI, elastic uh, finance, elastic supply finance. This asset class, which has, have been coined as adaptive commodities, commodities, they call it adaptive commodities, I like to call it EFI, shows immeasurable, ben immeasurable benefits for determining the role supply serves in the price stability of an asset. Bill Drummond, a pseudo name for a group of developers seeking to return cryptocurrency to its roots, shouts out, seek, uh, seeks to develop this new asset class even further. We have several projects in the pipeline which will test the validity of adaptive commodities and validate the relationship between the supply and demand. The first project is Tokens of Babel, a gamified token which burns supply whenever new all-time pri high prices are reached or met. All right. So... The state of current Bill Drummond's experiments. Tokens of Babel and Anti Ample have both begun to provide valuable insight into the relationship between supply and demand. The rebase logic that these protocols contain allow for two different types of potential market reactions. Xant provides the market with the potential to prop up the price as time goes on because Xant burns when price closes lower than the previous day. Supply being restricted at a lower price point encourages demand to increase, which potentially increases price in the long run. All right, so that's what it's designed to do. Now, TOB provides the market with the potential to accelerate price upward as time goes on. TOB's tokenomics encourage 
demand to increase when all time highs are met, there, thereby encouraging a potential dramatic increase in price in the, in price in the future. All right, so these are the already social experiments, financial social experiments this group has already come out with, tokens of Babel and anti ample and they work a little opposite of each other in some ways. All right, the psychology of tokens of Babel. Tokens of Babel is a unique adaptive commodity because it utilizes the key psychological component in order to force its appreciation. By encouraging traders to increase the price of the token through the restriction of supply, TOB will gradually develop a relationship with its traders and provide value by directly rewarding the accumulation of the token. By restricting the available supply of TOB, demand will grow and price will rise. In the realm of psychology, our rebase method is very similar to the concept of reinforcement. So these guys are looking into psychology. These guys understand economics. These guys understand cryptocurrency, blockchain technology. These guys understand smart contracts and software engineering, right? Like you, it's, you don't just come out with this out of nowhere. This takes a lot of very intelligent people, person, just deeper insight into the game to create something new and just to see what will happen, right? Tokens of Babel builds upon this concept of proportional market cap ownership and utilizes a unique burn mechanism in an attempt to you you could date, sorry, correct me in the comments, the relationship between price and supply of a token. The term rebase is the nomenclature for burn events. The tokens of Babel has a unique rebasing mechanism which is detailed further below. Rebases of TOB affect the numbers of tokens in your wallet, but not your overall share of the total supply. Okay, if you own 0.5% of the total supply, you will always own 0.5% of the total supply, regardless of the number of tokens in your wallet. All right, so it's just like uh, ample fourth, just like anti ample. Doesn't matter how big the pie is, how big or small you own. If someone says you got 10% of that pie, no matter how big or how small, you always have 10% of that pie. All right, so that's this builds on the same concept of rebasing, rebase logic. Every, tor every 12 hours of the Tokens of Babel Oracle will attempt to trigger a rebase. This rebase attempts to take place at uh, 9 uh, UTC. If uh, when a rebase is attempted, the price of Tokens of Babel exceeds the historical all-time high, then 1% of the total supply of the token will be burned. All right, A new all-time high target will then be set to 110% of the price reached at rebase. If the price of Tokens of Babel is below the all-time high at the rebase attempt, the all-time high target is adjusted to 50% of the sum of the current price and previous all-time high target. What the fuck is all that? That's why you have to hit me up for the mentorship so we can actually break this down and know what you're getting into. This is how the economic tokenomics of it works, of this elastic supply currency, uh, AKA adaptive commodities, all right? So yeah, you gotta hit me up if you want me to break that down even more. As time goes on, we believe this rebase method will provide an interesting glimpse into the true nature of supply and demand. Additionally, this method of rebasing should always trend TOB in a positive price direction due to the nature of the market caps and supply restriction. Similarly to how Bitcoin and other mineable cryptocurrencies restrict supply on a time lock basis. TOB restricts supply by removing available tokens from the total supply. The benefit of TOB over a coin like Bitcoin, however, is that you will always hold a fixed ratio of the market cap regardless of the price of the supply. We believe that this rebase logic will allow the tokens of Babel to form a unique psychological relationship with traders, which we believe will greatly influence the value of TOB. So this is how they're saying th this whole thing should go. All right, I'm, 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 I can't say yes or no. I don't know. I'm, pr I'm participating in it uh, and seeing how this goes. Either like this is either going to supposed to really make you rich or you're really not going to make much. But it's designed to make you rich. It's designed to make you money. Like that's what it's, it's a, it's. That's what it is. As soon as you reach an all-time high, 1% uh, of the price gets low. So you're trying to always push it up. And as you're pushing it up, the price, uh, the, the supply decreases. So it would actually kind of increase the value. So that's, that's some, it's an experiment, man. The law of supply and demand is an economic theory which dictates, dictates the following. Low supply and high demand ind indicates an increase in price. And high supply and low demand indicates a decrease in uh, price. This concept has been utilized by the Amplifor protocol to continuously adapt their commodity towards a stable $1 target. But it may also be possible to use the law of supply and demand to adapt a commodity to maximize price. That is, it may be possible to increase demand by restricting supply. 
TOB seeks to aggressively test this theory by providing a trading game, which rewards traders who push the price of the commodity upwards. All right, so it seems logical. We've never done this before, but let's see how it goes. Conclusion. Tokens of Babel is the first of many Bill Drummond experiments to come. The continued development of a new asset uh, class is, is essential for the cryptocurrency space to continue to expand. We believe that Tokens of Babel is the first in a long time of pioneering cryptocurrencies which will, which will seek to validate the very nature of economics. Innovation and thoughtful development of a new adaptive commodities will change the world of finance dramatically. And Tokens of Babel is just a piece of, piece of a much larger puzzle that will begin to show itself as time goes on. Join us in changing the future of finance. Join us in returning to the roots of cryptocurrencies. I'm down with that. I support that. And I'm, 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 in on the, I'm in on it. That's why I'm making this video, is to bring more awareness about this. All right? So not just that, they're teaming up with ZZZ Finance to do yield farming for TOB. So it's called ASH, right? They're burning. So now we got this new token called ASH. Um, finalize the details with the, uh, with the new yield farm token collab with ZZZ Finance. You already know my audience, ZZZ, the next few days should be interesting. So these guys are on top of it. They're not just making one currency and sitting back. They're already on to the next thing. And these are like DeFi, Elastic, Adaptive Commodity Lego Blocks. I know it sounds like a lot, it, you know? But here we go. ZZZ is a community centered DeFi project model to take the success of features of Yearn Finance and improve upon them by the people for the people. So XAMP, TOB, and ASH, right? Now you're burning the supply for both of them, then you yield farm it for ASH. Put your XAMP uh, and TOB on Uniswap liquidity pool, get liquidity tokens, then yield farm them from ASH. So this is already like, this is a game, it's fun. All these different currencies work on their own, plus they all work together. Overall, we feel these two initial experiments have shown the potential that adaptive commodities have, adaptive, adaptive, adaptive commodities have toward, towards creating a new asset class, all right? Class of asset. We want to quickly address to our community the TS Project ASH, a protocol which will be developed by ZZZ for yield farming, XAMP, and TOB pools. ASH is currently in development. We ask that the community be patient with ASH and thank both the ZZZ team and their diligent work in our community for inside, insights as to where we should focus on our next experiments. ASH will be a strong addition to the burn, uh, burn the State ecosystem, and we are excited to release it, but we want to ensure that we properly test the project before release. All right, so you take, this is where you go, you take your ETH, you get the XAMP, you take your XAMP, then get the TOB, then you get the TOB, and then you can get the ASH later, or you can get the BOA. Now, we're about to get into that. Yeah, man, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. So here's the Twitter. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you follow Bill Drummond, a.k.a. Burn the State. This dude really wants to bring down the government type shit. Like, I'm, I'm down with that. And, he's, and he or she or a group of them are doing it in a very in strategical, intelligent, sociological, psychological, experimental way. All right. So make sure you uh, it has to do with like Princess Diana. Even there's another account that supports this account. It's called Games of Bill. Like, um, has to do with something Princess Diana. I'm not sure what the whole secret is. You know, there's all types of rumors and conspiracy theories, but apparently this guy knows something and that's the avatar he, or, uh, he she, or they choose to use. Um, and I fucks with it. So here's the anti-ample website. Pretty much are, uh, it's very simple, straightforward, almost seems like a scam, but it apparently is really legit. And it has some uh, design economics. They burn the supply every day. So we'll see what happens. And oh, you can go to Ant, uh, Zamp Burn to see. There's no other token, token that has this exact mechanism. While we do not know the outcome of this experiment, we do know that it would be interesting to say the least. So they're literally burning their own supply. They could have kept this. They could have manipulated the game. But what people are saying, this group of people have burned over $15 million of their own token. They didn't keep any to think. So like, this is why it's a social experiment because they are actually burning their own supply. They could keep the money, but they're like, we're not going that route. We're trying something completely different. So uh, this is where you'll find all the, uh, to all the economics of the burn. We, we hit me up for the mentorship. We can go through this and uh, if you really want to learn more, but this is, this is some new stuff. And the fact that they're burning their own money instead of keeping it and utilizing it is, it, you know, because to them, they can just keep creating more money. So it's nothing to them to burn money because they can create more money and uh, push it to the next limit. So I like that. 
Here's the Tokens of Babel website. Price is God. Tokens of Babel is a trading game on Ethereum that burns tokens whenever a new all-time high is made. Inspired by the Bible story where humanity builds a tower so high that they challenge God's divinity. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. So it's like the higher they get, like they have to burn it. It's like it has something to do with the biblical stuff. So once every 24, 24 hours, this is how it goes. If it reaches the target price or doesn't, supply is burned, the rebases. So how does it work? Um, burns are conducted via something called a rebase. Rebases affect the amount of tokens in your wallet, but not your overall supply. This means that the volume of tokens do not decrease. But the, So go to this website. You can learn more. I won't go over it. It's, a, it's, it's confusing. It's very confusing at first, and it will take some time to understand it. And that's why you hit me up for the mentorship. Uh, so tokens of Babel, and then they have the tokens of Babel burn. So this is all the burn supply uh, of tokens of Babel. So this is all the tokenomics of how it's supposed to increase the price over the long run and different rebases when you got to call it and everything like that. Now, here's the newest one. Here's the newest one that just dropped less than like two days ago from the time that this video is called BOA, a self-cannibalizing token game. Now, this is dope. I'm already invested. And... Um, there's only a 50 circulating supply, just like RWS. Only 100 supply. And I won't go super into detail, but essentially, every time you make a sell, 1% gets taxed. That tax goes into the tax pool, all right? Every time you transfer, you get taxed. So if you make any sell, you lose a little bit of money, plus the network fees, and if you make any transfer. But if you buy it, it costs you nothing. And if you hold it, it costs you nothing. Taxes go into the tax pool. You burn a BOA and you get a proportional percentage of the total tax pool. So the way this works is um, you reward buyers, you punish sellers. It's a very tiny supply. People love Wi-Fi because it's so expensive. Numbers go up. Well, BOA, there are only 50 tokens in circulation, 50, and with an incentive to burn. So there will be even less than 50, the way this whole thing works. So I won't go into detail right now. I keep saying that. But uh, let's just jump over to here, the protocol. BOA is a community tax protocol which builds a pool of redeemable tokens for token holders to withdraw from a, for, from a profit. Rather than rebasing by burning the supply at a fixed period, BOA allows the users to decide when a rebase occurs. So instead of doing it automatically or whatever, the users decide when it's going to happen. Okay. However, when users decide to redeem tokens from this pool, some tokens are burnt from the total supply. The rules of BOA. So whenever people are like, yo, there's kind of, I can go get money. Well, the, I have to show that I have the money. Then that money gets burnt. So the supply actually decreases and then I get more money. But if everybody didn't go and try to get the money, then the supply, I don't know. It's, whew, we're trying to see what happens. BOA has a built-in tax pool, which holds 50 tokens at launch. All transfers of the BOA token are taxed at 1% and the tax is sent to the tax pool. All Uniswap, all Uniswap sales are taxed at 1%. All Uniswap buys are not taxed. Tokens of the tax pool can be redeemed by anyone who holds BOA. So it's like a pool of money that anybody can go and grab. But if you go and grab it, uh, the supply decreases. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Tokens from the tax pool can only be redeemed if more than 50% of the circulating supply is locked in the tax pool. Users... Who, who, who buy and choose to hold BOA for long periods of time will not be taxed. Users who sell and move BOA frequently will lose 1% of each transaction. We believe that this will help uh, to reward those who believe in the project long term and punish those seeking to make a quick buck. The protocol has been developed on the Ethereum network. It has a total supply of 100 and utilizes 18 decimal point precision. Initially, 50 BOA tokens will be locked in the pool supply, which brings the total circulating supply of BOA to 50 at launch. All right, so you want to read more into this, but it's an interesting concept. It's called a self-cannibalizing, where the users, it's up to them if they're going to take it, but if you take it, the supply gets decreased, so it's like you become more valuable, but um, yeah, it's, it's like you eat yourself alive, like it gets valuable, but it kind of hurts you at the same time if you move it and transfer it, and um, yeah, like it's, we'll see what happens, but this pit, 94. $95,000. It hit $95,000. So the way these all projects work together, and uh, TOB and XAMP, you can trade those. And if you trade those, they, they both affect the rebase and circulated supply. So these work together. And then in order to get uh, BOA, you need to get TOB. So TOB is, uh, BOA is at 51. It was at $95,000. Uh, 
And uh, so it's up there because the supply is so low, right? And I've already uh, got some and then supplied it to the liquidity pool. So I'm already coming up. So like, it's crazy to see what's gonna happen. We don't know what's gonna happen. We got Ample Forth, which opened the gateway. Now we got anti ampo uh, Bill Drummond, this group of people created anti ampo then they created Tokens of Babel, then they created BOA, and now they're coming out with Ash on ZZZ. And it's like, what is going on, man? There is so much to keep up with. Like, it's social experiments. It, these are really designed to make you rich, you know? Um, you know, and obviously, you know, like it, the price can go down, but the way the economics and tokenomics is designed is really could make you really profitable. And I, so that's why I'm invested a, a little bit and exposed to a little bit all this just to see what it, how it goes. People, this is taking cryptocurrency to the next level. If you want to learn more and just learn how to invest and yield farm and get it all to this, hit me up for the mentorship. I got your back. Much love. Hopefully you learned something. Take care. Peace.